Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to do part two of the best quality fragrances in my collection. So I've got a bunch here. I'm gonna jump right in. I've got a quite a few, well, no, I think I've got a few Guerlain's um, in this lineup here because Guerlain just makes really good fragrances. That's why I love them so much. I just think that they make beautiful perfumes. They're not all a win for me. I'm not a fan of like the Le Petit Robe Noir line. Um, there, are a, there are some that I'm just not a huge fan of. So this here, this is actually a men's cologne. This is Lum Ideal Cologne from Guerlain. This is such an amazing smelling fragrance. It's like a citrusy, warm, with the like slightest hint of powderiness, almond fragrance. And it is so beautiful. It's, it definitely leans a little bit masculine. It's probably the only, this might be the only fragrance that I have in my collection that like really leans masculine that I feel comfortable wearing. In fact, I get compliments on this every time I wear it. People are always like, what are you wearing? And then when I tell them I'm actually wearing men's cologne, they get super uncomfortable for some reason. It's really, really unique. It's just, it's it smells like a Guerlain fragrance and it's really, it's super, super bright and citrusy and fresh, but it's still warm and cozy because of that almond. It's just gorgeous, I love it. Very, very high quality smelling. It's an absolute beast. This is one of my favorite fragrances to wear in the hot weather because it's nuclear on me and because it's a great hot weather fragrance with a lot of citrus in it and it's really hot weather appropriate, but it's also super cozy and comforting and I love it for that. So anyways, that is Lum Ideal Cologne from Guerlain. I have tried quite a few from the Lum Ideal line and this one is just my favorite. There's just something about this one that, ugh, I don't know, it's just so good. Okay, this next one. I feel like this whole house in general is just really good quality. I don't know that I've ever smelled or tried a Mancera or a Montel fragrance that wasn't absolutely nuclear. I mean, they're just really good quality fragrances. And this one is no exception. This is Mancera Holidays, and I love this. This is another hot weather fragrance. I'm so obsessed with this perfume. The longer I've had it too, like I've had this for, I've had it for a couple of years now, and the longer I've had this one, the better it's smelling. It's one of those fragrances that just kind of, um, it just kind of starts to get rich smelling as it ages. I love it. This is either a love or a hate for people though. This does have like a, some kind of like an ozonic or I think, I think technically it just says C notes. So it's got some kind of like a, kind of like a salty, like a salty sea air kind of aspect to it but it's got coconut in it and it's just it's a it's like a beachy coconut fragrance but it's so unique and I just love it I love it so much it's such a high quality fragrance it smells expensive it smells like an expensive beachy fragrance um I just absolutely love it and like I said before I feel like Montel and, Man and Mancera no matter what perfume you pick up from either one of these houses, you're just gonna get a great quality fragrance. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't love them all. There are a lot that I actually don't like because they, both houses, tend to use that very heavy metallic musk in the base of their fragrances, which just does not work for me. And so I tend to not like quite a few, but I can't deny the quality of them. They're they're just really, really nice fragrances. So anyways, that is Mancera Holidays. Okay, next we have a celebrity scent and thankfully my beautiful subscriber friend reminded me about this fragrance because I would have left it out. This is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey and this, this is an amazing perfume. And I cannot believe the quality that you get for the price. I think I picked up this three, this is a 3.4 ounce bottle. Yes, this huge 3.4 ounce bottle. I think I got it for, me. it was definitely less than $15. I wanna say it was between 12 and $14 or something like that. 
and it smells so much more expensive than it is. It's got this beautiful, warm honey note, but it also has some really beautiful, fresh white florals in it. It has a little bit of a brightness in the top. And it's just one of those fragrances that when it dries down on your skin, it just, everything blends beautifully. It meshes really well. Um, well, it meshes really well with my skin chemistry. I feel like people that maybe don't have the best luck with honey might not like this one, but it's just, it smells way more expensive than it is. And it smells exactly like something that I remember from my childhood in the 80s. I cannot for the life of me think of what it is, but it's something. So it's also nostalgic for me on top of that. Oh, I just love everything about it. It's one of those super underrated gems. I don't hear it talked about a whole bunch, um, but every person that has picked it up after they've heard me talk about it has come back to say how much they love it, how much more expensive it smells than it is. It's just a great quality celebrity scent. Um, there aren't many celebrity scents on the market that are this nice. So anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. Okay, I pulled just one of these little Nazimato oils. I've got three of them. I've got Narcotic V, I've got uh, China White, and then I've got this one called Nudiflorum. Nudiflorum is my absolute favorite. There's something so, I don't even know. Nazimato, it's hard to find the notes in their fragrances. I'll see if I can find them. I would love to find out the notes and find out what notes are in this. It's kind of like this weird, earthy, really, really strong skin musk, like sweet, earthy, really strong kind of skin musk. I absolutely adore this fragrance. There's something about it that smells clean, but smells dirty at the same time. It's just an amazing fragrance. And these oils, these are tiny, tiny little four, I think these are four mil, yeah. They're extraits, but they're oils. They're four mil. I will probably have these for the rest of my life because you seriously only need to put like a dot on like one dot on either side of your neck and maybe a dot on the inside of your elbows and you are, it's nuclear. You will smell like this for days. Like you will smell like this until you wash it off. It's incredible, the quality. Not only, and not even just the quality and how they perform and you can just tell they're made with incredibly expensive materials, but in how they smell. I've never smelled anything else like this fragrance. It's such an incredibly unique fragrance. And so is China White. Um, now, Narcotic V, not so much. It's kind of like a sweet bubblegum tuberose, but Nudiflorum and China White are on another level as far as just uniqueness, um, quality, longevity, how they wear everything about them. They're just amazing. I picked up, and at the time that I bought these, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just spent that on 12 mil of oil <laughs> because I think it was, I want to say that they were on, the, this little set was on sale at Lucky Scent. And I want to say I paid like maybe $120 dollars. I think it was. I think they were on sale for like $120 dollars. So that's like $40 for four mil of oil, but it, I don't regret it at all. It is completely worth it. They're, they're totally worth it because this little tiny four mil bottle will last me the rest of my life. So anyways, that is Nazimato Nudiflorum. Okay, next we've got a Lancome fragrance. And I, it's funny because I am really not the biggest fan of Lancome perfumes, especially the more kind of designer line um, the ones that are in the department store, Livia Bell. I'm not a huge fan of the um, La Nuit Tresor line, except for I really do like the um, Nude is okay. The, I think it's called Nude, the one in the nude bottle with the coconut note in it. That one's okay, but it just performs really badly. Um, the Musk one, I really like that one, but again, performs really badly. The other two La Nuits, I'm just not crazy about. 
Um, I'm just not crazy about many Lancome perfumes, but this line, and I had, I think I had Jasmine's Marzipan in the first video, but I saw Lavon's Trianon sitting there and I was like, oh my gosh, you are such an amazing perfume. This is such a, such an amazing quality lavender fragrance. A lot of times lavender doesn't last, um, especially if you get more kind of like a more natural one. This thing though is nuclear. I absolutely adore Adore this perfume it's like a whole bunch of different it's basically a whole bunch of different lavenders I think it's got like four different varieties of lavender in it and vanilla and I think that's it it's definitely not complex it's very linear it smells exactly the same from the time you spray it on until it gets to the deep dry down but I love it it's an absolute beast. This is one of those fragrances that you're gonna smell like this until you wash it off. It will stay in your hair for days. It will stay on clothing and sweaters for weeks. It's, it's just amazing. I love it because it's vanilla, but without being too sweet. It's really, really cozy. It's very calming. It's just a beautiful lavender perfume. The quality from of this line, this La Maison, this whole line of fragrances is just so, so amazing. In fact, FragranceNet has some of the one ounce bottles um, on their website for a really, really good price right now, like in the $50 range. And I really, I need, I've been meaning to go through all of the ones that they've got available and, you know, pick up the ones that I'm interested in, but I keep forgetting. But anyways, yeah, just an amazing line of perfumes, such good quality, the, definitely the best fragrances that Lancome has ever done besides Poem. <laughs> now Poem is a different story, but I'm talking about like the original formulation of Poem, not the new one. The new one's okay. It's not like horrible, but it's not very good either. So anyways, that is Lancome Lavance Trianon. Okay, this next one, this next one is, it's definitely not the most like expensive smelling perfume in the world, but I think that the quality of this fragrance is amazing. And that is Michel Germain Sugarful. This is like a pretty juvenile, juvenile smelling scent. It really does smell like a pixie stick. It smells like a sugary powdered candy. I love it. But what I love most about it is the quality. It's such a good quality fragrance. It performs really well. It, it is another one of those kind of linear fragrances where it smells the same throughout the entire wear, but it's really, really consistent. And I think that that is another thing that I kind of equate quality with is the consistency of a fragrance. Does it perform consistently on me? Does it smell? Is it something that when I reach for it and wear it, that I know what to expect with it. It's never gonna like throw me for a loop. It's, you know, it's never gonna, it's not ever gonna smell weird. No matter what weather you wear it in, it's always gonna kind of smell the same. This is a fragrance that I can wear this in the dead of the summer. I can wear it in the dead of the winter. It doesn't matter. It's very, very consistent. It's always gonna smell the same. It always performs the same. Um, it's not one of those perfumes that it's like, oh, it performs great in the winter, but not in the summer or vice versa. No, it's just a very, it's like a workhorse kind of perfume. Very consistent, you can count on it. You can rely on it. Um, and I think that's because it's really amazing quality. Even though it's this really juvenile candy-like perfume, it's really, really good quality. Um, and I love it. I love it for that. It's one of, it really is one of the best quality fragrances in my collection as far as, like I said, just being a very consistent kind of workhorse kind of fragrance and I adore it. And it helps that it comes in the cutest bottle ever. I think this bottle is just so cute. It reminds me of like fifties diner 
It's so cute. So anyways, that is Michelle Germain Sugarful. We have another Guerlain, and this one is, I'm trying to think how many from this line I've smelled. Um, so this is a fragrance from Guerlain. This is called Queer Beluga. This was sent over to me from a beautiful friend. And oh my gosh, this perfume is stunning. This is like a really, really soft suede and vanilla perfume. It's gorgeous. It's such a warm, cozy, super classy, really, really expensive smelling perfume. I found a perfume, a Latafa perfume, that is not, no, sorry, not Latafa. I found an Afnan perfume that is being compared to Queer Beluga. I'm going to pick it up because I have to know if it actually smells like this. I would love to be able to tell you guys I found an alternative to this because this is now a $360 bottle of perfume. It's crazy expensive. I know that that is just not a perfume that people, you know, it's just not anything that people wanna spend that kind of money on. I completely understand. Um, so yeah, I would love to find an alternative. But yes, beautiful. This is just, it's so, classy it smells so expensive it smells very high-end it just reminds me of like a rich classy lady that she just smells amazing not only because of her perfume but because she's carrying like a beautiful leather bag or something and the smell of her leather bag mixed with her perfume is just smells super expensive that's what this perfume reminds me of it's Guerlain it's from their arts and materials line so it's made with amazing quality materials and it's just a stunning very very high quality fragrance like maybe the classiest smelling fragrance in my collection yeah i would go so far as to say this is probably the most classy perfume that i have it's so good so anyways, that is Guerlain Queer Beluga. Okay, next, this is what I am wearing today. I love this perfume. Uh, this is from Guerlain as well. This is Guerlain Mon Exclusif. And this is another fragrance that is just, it's such good quality. Um, I think I, I think I talked about just the regular Guer Guerlain EDP in the first video. And this is really, really similar, but this is way more complex. It's, you definitely still get that lavender and vanilla combination, but it's just not the same. This has got like salt and butter in it, and it smells buttery. It definitely, like the butter note, makes it smell actually buttery. It's gorgeous. It's sweeter than Mon Guerlain. It's an amazing fragrance. The quality of this is incredible. Some people are saying that Mon Guerlain doesn't last on them and I hate that. That makes me so sad, but I understand because I am one of those people that I have so many fragrances that just don't last on me. My skin just eats everything. So usually fragrances that do last on other people don't last on me. And I think probably vice versa, it's just skin chemistry. But thankfully I am one of the people that Mon Guerlain is an absolute monster on. It lasts it, I will smell it until I wash it off. And this one is the same. In fact, this one's even more so because it's just a little bit more, I don't wanna say more high quality smelling than Mon Guerlain because they both smell like really high quality fragrances, but there's something about this one. This one just has like a richness to it and I love it. So anyways, that is Guerlain Mon Exclusive. Okay, next is an Armani fragrance and I've got a few Armani fragrances in my collection and the ones that I do have, I absolutely love. I, in fact, I could have included my Aqua de Joya Ascenza in this as well because it's also an amazing quality perfume, especially for a hot weather fragrance. That one is like nuclear on me. And the original Aqua de Joya doesn't last on me at all, especially this newest formulation is like trash. But, but anyways, this is Armani C. This is Armani C Le Parfum though. And this, oh gosh, this reminds me a little bit, a little bit of Kate Walsh Boyfriend. It's that same kind of a fragrance, but it, this doesn't have plum in it. This has um, black currant in it. And this one's a little bit more complex. 
Um, Kate Walsh Boyfriend doesn't have a ton of notes in it. This one has, I think, like a few more notes in it, but this is beautiful. This is like a, I don't have another amber in my collection like this, except for Boyfriend, which is similar. But this is like a really black current heavy amber. The black currant really is very, very prominent. It's it's sweet and it smells like black currant berry. But if you like Kate, Wal Kate Walsh boyfriend, I think you would really like this. This one's a little bit more um, a little bit more complex. It's a little bit richer smelling than Kate Walsh boyfriend, and it's a little bit sweeter. It's just got a little bit more. Um, body to it. Sadly, this has long been discontinued, which I absolutely hate because it's, I don't know why they discontinue the best fragrances. So this is one that I'm going to have to, like, I'll wear it and enjoy it, but um, I am going to have to kind of ration it. It's not something that I would wear for a whole week straight or anything because I just, I want to keep it in my collection because it's, gosh, it's such a gem and it's such high quality. It's another one that smells really, really expensive. It's very classy smelling. It smells like it's made out of amazing materials, and I'm sure it is. Thankfully, some houses still released some gems like this before they all went downhill and they watered everything down. So anyways, that is Giorgio Armani C. Le Parfum. Such a stunner. Okay, this next one, this is a vanilla fragrance, and this is a niche house, and I this whole house is really, really good. I've smelled quite a few fragrances from Frank Boclet. Um, this is Frank Boclet Vigny. This smells like a key lime pie. I say that every time I talk about this fragrance, but it really does. It smells like a key lime pie with whipped cream on top. This has got lime in the top and it is so lime heavy. It's got so much lime in it. So it's like this creamy, sweet lime vanilla fragrance. And it's amazing. It smells like a dessert. It performs so well on me. This is a vanilla fragrance in my collection that actually lasts really, really well. Kind of like La Vanilla Pure Vanilla, which is another amazing high quality vanilla fragrance. This one is as well. I can get, it's not nuclear or anything. I'm not gonna get like 10 plus hours out of it. It's not one of those that I'm gonna smell until I wash it off, but I can easily get a good eight hours out of it before it would start to wear away. It's such a good one. I'm so curious about the other ones in this line, but every time I go to look up other fragrances in this line, they, I don't know, they get really bad, or, well, a lot of them don't get the best reviews on Fragrantica's, so I don't know. Um, like, I want to explore this line further, but then again, maybe I already got the best. I don't know. I think there's a Tonka one in this line though. I need to check. If there is, I probably need to get it. But anyways, that is Frank Boclet's uh, Vigny. Okay, this next one. This is one of my like top five for life perfumes. I am kind of obsessed with this fragrance and I think it is an amazing quality fragrance. I love most things from this house though. This is Etat Libre d'Orange like this. Um, this, I have like a special place in my heart for this house because Etat Libre d'Orange is the first this and Histoire des Parfums, those two houses are the first two niche houses that I ever got into that though these, they're the two houses that um, were my introduction to niche fragrances and that was back when Sephora started carrying them. Um, it's probably been 10 years ago now. I want to say it's been right at maybe about 10 years ago. I ordered Etat Libre d'Orange as well as Histoire de Parfum both had um, Sephora had discovery kits on their website and I picked up both of them and I fell in love with both of them. Um, I, I like nursed those discovery kits because again, that was like when I was very first getting into niche fragrances. But anyways, this one has always been one of my favorites. This one is called like this and 
This is an amazing perfume. This is another one you can wear it all year round. It smells, it doesn't perform, it's not like consistent. It doesn't perform the same in hot weather as it does cold weather and vice versa. But it's just an amazing perfume. It's got like immortelle in it and ginger and I think it's got like a pumpkin note maybe. I can't remember totally, but I know it's got immortelle, ginger. I think it's got some rose in it, but, but you really don't smell the rose. It's such a warm, comforting, cozy fragrance. It is one of my favorite. It's like a top five for life. I couldn't live without this perfume. And it's amazing quality. I think Etat Libre d'Orange as a house makes amazing quality perfumes. Not all of them perform really well, but they're the, they're the types of perfumes that even if they don't perform well, they're, you can still smell the amazing quality of them because they just smell really, really high quality and this one is no exception. This, in fact, this is probably the best. I just love this one. So anyways, that is like this from Etat Libre d'Orange. Okay, this next one, this is a little treasure. This was sent over from a beautiful subscriber. This is a little um, seven and a half mil Stella Parfum. So Stella McCartney Parfum and there's just the tiniest little bit left in here and this it's beautiful this whole thing it's like all glass even the little stopper is glass this was such an amazing perfume it was such an amazing quality perfume the original formulation i need to just go ahead and wear this and enjoy it oh my gosh this is an old signature of mine. I know a lot of you know that. Um, I wore this, I went through probably three or four bottles of this back, I think it came out in 2005, and I, I've i worn it on and off since then. Like I've never not had a bottle of Stella in my collection. It's one of my favorite perfumes on the planet. It's probably my favorite rose perfume of all time. It's just an amazing perfume and it's an amazing quality. And yes, they have watered it down. The new formulation super sucks, but it still smells the same or very nearly the same. Um, the smell of it hasn't been completely butchered. It just doesn't, it's just not the same quality as it used to be in, uh, in that it just doesn't perform the way that it used to but it still smells amazingly high quality and just so stunning. So anyways, that is Stella McCartney Stella. I had to pull out this little beautiful perfume. Okay, this next one, I've smelled quite a few from this house, probably smelled, I don't know, 10 or 12 fragrances from this house. And I feel like this house is such an amazing quality house. Um, and that is 4160 Tuesdays. This fragrance that I have here is called What I Did on My Holidays, and this perfume is probably one of the best quality perfumes in my collection. This one is super, super unique. Cotton candy and mint ice cream, and it's got like a sea salt note or like a sea, sea notes, or it's an incredibly unique perfume. And this thing is an absolute monster. This is one of those fragrances that you will smell like this until you wash it off. It will stay, it'll hang around forever. This is what I would consider more of a warm weather fragrance as well. This is something that I wear in the summertime. It's so, so cozy and like so comforting. There's something about it that kind of reminds me of Halloween at the same time. It reminds me of like a fun fair, which reminds me of, you know, fall. It's just incredible. It's just made with incredibly high quality materials and you can smell it and you can tell by the performance. And every single fragrance that I've smelled from this house, I've had a couple that didn't perform super well, but it's kind of like Etat Libre d'Orange, even though not every single one of them is nuclear or performs super, super well, they all smell so expensive and so high quality. You're never gonna put your nose on a fragrance from this house and be like, oh, that smells cheap, or, you know, or think that it doesn't smell expensive. They, they just all do. 
So anyways, that is uh, 4160 Tuesdays, what I did on my holidays. Okay, next, I could not leave this one out because I talked about rosé all day in my last video, Wicked Good. This is from Gallagher. This is another fragrance that, oh my gosh, you can smell the quality of this. It's only three notes. This is chocolate, Madagascar vanilla, and tonka bean. There's nothing synthetic smelling about this. It smells, it is so rich, it's sweet, it's yummy, it's a gourmand, but the tonka really, really grounds it. It's amazing. It's such a high quality fragrance. I mean, you can just, you can smell it. I've never smelled another perfume like this on the market. I've had people ask me to find something that smells like this and I've never been able to find anything that smells like this. It's amazing. It's an amazingly high quality fragrance, um, especially for being a chocolate fragrance that doesn't smell synthetic, that's super hard to do. So this one is just, it's like on another level. And even vanilla sometimes. Sometimes vanilla is hard to make not smell synthetic or inexpensive. And it's this one, this perfume is just done to perfection. It's just amazing. I love it so, so much. So anyways, that is Wicked Good from Gallagher. And then last, we have this beauty. This is Atelier d'Or Lune Feline. And this one, this is another one. I always forget that I even own this perfume because I only wear it in the wintertime. It's a very, very intense, spicy vanilla fragrance. It's one of the warmest fragrances I've got in my collection because it's got so much cardamom and cinnamon and it's just, it's a very, very warm and spicy perfume. And it's another one that I've never really, there are other fragrances on the market that kind of smell like this, but I've never smelled such a high quality one. This one smells very, very expensive. It smells super high quality. It's an absolute beast. It performs like crazy. It's just, such a beautiful fragrance. Not that I need real gold flakes in my perfume. I certainly don't. It just adds <laughs> to the expensive perfume experience to have, you know, real gold flakes. And this, the bottle, everything about this perfume is just very expensive. The lid is super like heavy. You could use this as a paperweight. The bottle is super heavy, really thick glass. It's just an amazing quality perfume. I've smelled a few from this line, and again, everything that I've smelled is just, wow. Like, really, really high quality. For me, this is niche. This is a really beautiful niche fragrance. So anyways, that is Atelier d'Or Lune Feline. And that is gonna be it, guys. I am gonna do a part two to my lowest quality fragrances in my collection. Um, that one was fun. I was so amazed I didn't get any hate, comment, any hate comments on it, but I think because I put that disclaimer. Had I not put that disclaimer in the front, I would have gotten tons of hate. So I am I am glad that my disclaimer worked. But anyways, yeah, that will, that part two for that one will be coming soon. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.